Happy Management are proud to be the premier sponsors of the Fitness Business Podcast. For everyone this week in the FBP family, we have a free checklist for a cracking marketing piece so you can get your marketing hustle mode on. Just go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. I have a big guest coming your way this week. But before we get to him, I wanted to let you know about a new industry association that has just launched. The Women in Fitness Association is founded by fitness industry leader and consultant, Lindsay Rainwater, who I'm sure many of you already know. The association has been created to establish a platform to prepare and to develop more women to be in leadership roles in the fitness industry. And I think that all of you know that here on the show, we have always celebrated amazing women in fitness, both through our regular shows and our Women in Fitness Month every single year. In fact, speaking of inspirational women in our industry, I've got a little secret for you. Next week's guest is the CEO of Flywheel Sports, Sarah Rob O'Hagan. I am super, super excited to bring you that interview with her next week. Furthermore, this year, we've actually decided to bring our Women in Fitness Month forward to September, and we've already got some incredible women who are going to be featuring in this year's shows. So make sure you stay tuned for more details about that in the coming months. In the meantime, you can learn more about the Women in Fitness Association by going to their website, which is womeninfitness.org. And of course, I'll put that link in today's show notes. Now, let's get stuck into this week's show. I am thrilled to welcome back Luke Carlson, the founder and CEO of Discover Strength based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm sure most of you remember Luke from the first time he joined us on show 91 when he came on to talk about identifying your core purpose. Today, he's back and we discuss leadership and goal setting. Specifically, we talk about what it means to lead with vision. He takes us through key questions that all leaders should ask. And we talk about how to succinctly plan your short, medium and long term business goals. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. I've been lucky enough to see today's guest present twice this year, and most recently was during his trip to Australia when he spoke at the Phylax Business Summit. Given how popular he was with all of you from his first appearance on the show, there was no way that we're going to be celebrating our second birthday without inviting Luke Carlson back. One of the things that you may recall about Luke is that he is constantly learning and he encourages his team to do the same. So before we get stuck into his insights around leadership and goal setting, I first asked him to explain how he uses the Fitness Business Podcast as a learning tool for his team at Discover Strength. So what we love to do is we we think we're really strong in developing our managers and leaders around every conceivable facet of management and leadership. I mean, we are reading books. We are going through guest speakers come in on a regular basis and speak to our managers and leaders. And we are just working through all of this content. But what I realized is we really are not covering anything that is germane to the industry. So what we've done in our monthly management meeting, we have all different types of meetings and all different uh, training vehicles for how we develop people. But our monthly management meeting is where I first have breakfast for an hour with all of our managers. And then we get into a three-hour meeting. And the first hour of that three-hour meeting, we just play live an episode of the Fitness Business Podcast. And so I'm picking those. I'm selecting the ones that I think are the most relevant, that I think the whole team would love to listen to and then have discussion around. It's our way of having our leaders and managers get more connected to the industry rather than just reading a book by a management guru. They're understanding sales information and social media and marketing and all the different leadership topics that you've covered over the past many months, they're understanding that content from the perspective or the filter of our industry. And we were really weak in that area. And now that's, uh, I think, something that we're we're so incredibly excited about, and we've just been doing it a few months now. So it's a great addition to that, that meeting, and it's a great format where we're constantly covering the content. Because, Chantel, it's not enough 
for me to listen to the information and then go back to my team. I want my team to hear it firsthand and then we can have great dialogue around each each episode. Well, I'm so grateful for you as the business leader to be utilizing the podcast as that learning tool and to be encouraging your team. And I know how important ongoing education is to you and to the team. It's one of the areas that, that your business excels in. It's one of the areas that you pride yourself in is, is really being the most educated and the most up-to-date. So the fact that the podcast can provide you with some content that you can use in a practical way to improve your team's knowledge and to keep them up to date with the latest and greatest news in the industry. That means the world to me. So thank you so much for doing that and for sharing that story with the rest of our listeners. Yeah, now, no, let, me mention, yeah. let me mention one thing about that. Um, and I don't mean to cut you off, but no, please, we, please. the magic of it is that we're doing it live. I never say, hey, listen to this episode and then let's get together and talk about it. It's just different when we're all together listening to it together and we can stop it midstream if we want to and make some comments. Just listening to it live together rather than sending it out as a homework assignment in preparation for the meeting we found to be important and powerful. Oh, I love that and I love the idea of it generating conversation amongst your team. Now, Luke, when you're in Sydney, you uh, you presented at the Business Summit, and that was just a tremendous experience to, to see you present up there on stage, and you talked all around the topic of leadership. So when I saw that presentation, I immediately thought I wanted to get you on the show to talk about that. And I was hoping that you could start today by perhaps giving us a bit of a definition around what it means to lead with vision. So my definition is that, first of all, the leader of the organization understands the answers to a few really basic questions. And those questions really articulate where are we going and how do we plan on getting there? But the real key is it's not just your vision. And I think this is where so many leaders, so many entrepreneurs, so many owners of companies of all different sizes, this is where they stumble. They have a clear vision about where they're headed or where the organization is headed. But they have not inspired a shared vision. So the idea that, man, everybody in the organization understands where we're going and, in fact, is rowing in the same direction and is excited about driving the progress of, of the organization toward that, toward that end goal, that shared vision. So to me, that's, that's really the concept of, of leading with a vision. Do we understand where we're headed? Have we articulated it? And then have we inspired the rest of the team to, to row in the same direction? So, Luke, I believe in order to lead with vision, there are actually some key questions that we need to ask ourselves as leaders. So can you perhaps talk us through what some of those key questions are? Of course. Now, I'm passionate about these questions, but I'm also passionate about the idea that this is really it. It doesn't have to be more complicated than this. Most leaders, I mean leaders that I really, really, really respect, make this more complicated than it needs to be. And at the end of the day, what happens, Chantel, is really and truly only the leader of the organization or maybe like an executive team understands the vision component of the business. And because the leader is the one that crafted it, they're the one that really understands it. Well, man, if you ask the frontline employee, if you ask someone that's only been there for a year, if you ask someone who is working part time, do they really understand this whole vision component? So I think the vision component needs to be simplified. The, the questions that I would work through are what are the organization's core values why does the organization exist? And when I think about that, I think about two things. So what's the purpose of the organization, the core purpose? That's terminology that we're familiar with. But then along with that is, man, what's our strategic niche? What do we really want to be the best in the world at? And by the way, in our industry, I think that's the single most important question that we need to answer. And I think it's the question that we are all struggling with. Even the great operators are struggling with what is our strategic niche? The third overarching question is, what's our longest term goal? You know, what's like our 10-year goal, our big, hairy, audacious goal? Where are we going long term? And then I think the fourth question is, what's the three-year goal that we can really build our strategy around? Where do we want to be three years from now? Which is so key to understand because it 
It's really what puts us on track for our, our longest term goal, our, our big, hairy, audacious goal. The fifth question is, what's our one year plan? You know, now we're no longer dreaming. No longer do we have a big, hairy, audacious goal. We're talking about in the next year, what do we need to accomplish? What's that, what's that goal look like? And then the last question is, what's our marketing strategy? And specifically, when I think about marketing strategy, I think it all starts with understanding how we are different, not how we're better, but how we're unique, how we're differentiated from the rest of the competitors uh, in our industry, in our space. So to me, those are the six questions that you really have to start with. Luke, can we dive into a little bit more detail on that first one? So you were saying how important it is that we don't overcomplicate the message so that everyone throughout the business can understand what it is that the vision is of the business. Can you perhaps share with us an example of what you mean by that? Yeah, so I, I've been to, like you, Chantel, I've been to so many conferences and I've visited so many colleagues that I respect so much and I'll listen to their presentation. I'll listen to an hour presentation and 70 slides that explains what the vision component of their business is like. And it don't, And first of all, I'm always impressed by it. And I think, wow, that's absolutely incredible. We need to be on that level. And I thought that for many, 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 many years. And then I realized, hold on. The only person in that entire organization, in that club, that really understood that was the person that created it or maybe the team of people that created it. And so I think, well, the power of that clearly articulated vision diminishes when it's so complicated and nobody actually can articulate it and talk about it and they can't touch it and they can't interact with it unless they – maybe go back to the PowerPoint or an employee manual. So your vision component is not strong unless everybody in the organization has the same answers to these basic questions. And I've just seen so many examples where it gets too complicated. Then no one is making decisions around these key questions. And I think they lose their, I think they lose having a stated vision or strong vision component. We, we just lose so much by, by, not having clarity around the basics. Now, when we first caught off back in show 91, we did touch on some of these areas. We talked about the purpose and we talked about some of the core values and also the, the niche for um, Discover Strength. But just in case anyone missed that, do you want to maybe share with us what that vision is for Discover Strength? Yeah, so I'll, I'll share a couple of those answers. Thank for you. us, why do we exist? So that's like the second question. You have to have an overarching core purpose that turns you on emotionally. Like why do you get out of bed in the morning? What, what do you aspire to achieve? And it really should have nothing to do with the technical work that you do. It has nothing to do with the industry. So Disney says make people happy is their core purpose. For us, our core purpose is never stop improving. That's what turns us on. It doesn't tell you anything about what we actually do. I mean, we do personal training. That's all we do in our facilities. All we do is personal training around strength training. But the core purpose is broader than that. It's really baked into our the essence of our, our DNA, who we are as a human being. That's what gets us excited when we wake up in the morning and we go to work. We want to be a part of this process of never stop improving. Now, the second part of that is understanding what our strategic niche is. And the strategic niche for us is what we call personalized strength training. That is all we are going to do is personalized strength training. So I think in our industry, we struggle with the idea of a narrowly defined strategic niche. Why? Because we all love everything related to fitness. I mean, we love Pilates and we love yoga and we love strength training and personal training and cardio and we love boot camp and we love spin. And we love, there's, we can go on and on and on, but at some point, it's not our responsibility to offer all of these products and services. And by offering so many products and services, we really dilute the brand. I mean, I just believe strongly that the strength of a brand is an indirect proportion or has an indirect relationship to the, the scope of the brand. So the more you try to do, the weaker your brand becomes. And we're in an industry where most health clubs try to do everything. We feel pressured to do everything. And we're finally seeing players emerge that focus on just one thing, for example, soul cycle. You don't walk into SoulCycle and you're not upset 
that you can't do a Pilates class. And SoulCycle doesn't apologize for the fact that all you can do is a spin class. And their brand grows stronger and stronger by focusing on just one thing. And we see that in so many other industries, and we see that our industry is struggling with that right now. So for us, that strategic niche, the one thing that we want to be the best in the world at, it drives our economic engine, it is our obsession, is personalized strength training. Now, that doesn't mean, Chantel, that I don't love every other facet of fitness. I love it all, but we're just not going to do it. We're not going to sell it. And and I was interviewed in a, for a magazine, a business magazine recently, and the example that I always use is Victoria's Secret, which Victoria's Secret has a big presence in the U.S., and I know they're, they're in Australia, and they're in some parts of the U.K. Victoria's Secret's strategic niche is women's intimate apparel. It's bras and underwear. I can't walk into Victoria's Secret and be upset that I can't buy like a winter coat for a man at Victoria's Secret. They're not going to apologize for that. They know that I need a winter coat, but it's not their responsibility to, to sell me one. And I think that we have so many players in our industry that feel if it's a popular fitness trend, if it's a popular fitness fad, it's the health club's responsibility to sell it. And that could not be any further from the truth. Victoria's Street Secret is strong and has been able to scale as a concept because they stay true to just their strategic niche. I'm jumping away from the interview with Luke for just a second. In case you missed it, in show 106, I interviewed Lisa Simone Richards, and one of the things we spoke about was creating an audio logo for your business, which is effectively a modern-day elevator pitch and a great way to succinctly define your niche. If you missed that interview, jump over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and search 106. Now, let's get back to Luke. At the start of the show, he mentioned three levels of goals, short, medium, and long-term. So I asked him to help us better understand each goal level and work out how we ensure we're on track with our business goal setting. Here's what he had to say. Chantel, I'll start by saying that actually setting the BHAG may be the easiest of the three goals. Mm -hmm. So if we're defining the BHAG, I like to define the BHAG as a 10-year goal. Now, if you've only been operating for one year, Maybe you're not comfortable with 10 years and you may want to pick that time frame as five to seven years and that's fine. But if you've been operating for 40 years, I think picking a BHAG that's 10 years down the road is realistic or 15 years down the road is realistic. So the first thing you have to do is have the time goal specific. So you have to have the exact date that this is due by. So it's the December 31st, you know, five years from now, you have to define it. The second thing I, I think you have to do with the BHAG, and believe me, the, the BHAG can be a little bit more aspirational. Um, we'll put a man on the moon by the end of the decade is what JFK said, or um, Henry Ford said, I will democratize the automobile. I think the BHAG, this longest term goal, should be written in a way that it's about the revenue of the organization because revenue tells us the size of the company. Now, it's not all about money. It's about impact and so many other things. And I understand that. But if we don't understand the size of the company we're trying to create, I don't know how we build strategy after that. So I think you pick a 10-year goal that has a specific date and then you say it's a number. Do we want to be a $5 million company? So we're maybe one small independent club. Do we want to be a $10 million company, a $100 million company, or do we want to be a $1 billion company, which is, for example, what Lifetime Fitness is here in the U.S., and they're, they're based in Minnesota where I live. I mean, they're right down the street from us. They're right now just over a billion dollars. And so none of those, you know, $5 million or $10 million, $100 million or $1 billion, none of those are the right or wrong BHAG, but they have different implications as to how you're going to build strategy and, and, and how you're going to move the organization forward. So I think the leader of the organization, the leadership team needs to talk about what kind of business do we want to be managing or running? The, the mistake I see so many leaders make, I mean intelligent leaders who show up at work and bust their tail, they don't understand where they're actually going with the organization. And I don't know how you can structure your day in and day out work 
and your priorities for the quarter and your goals for the year if you don't really know where you're ending up. So I see very few companies that really articulate the size of the organization long term. Then you decide and, and the reason I say that's actually the easiest goal to set, Chantel, is mm-hmm. you're dreaming at this point. I mean, no one's holding your feet to the fire that you gotta achieve that ten year I mean, you got ten years to achieve it. So you can dream big here. And I truly believe you know you gotta be careful what you wish for, because I think you're gonna achieve it if you if you follow these steps. I think that whatever you dream in terms of the ten year is is doable, 1 billion, 100 million, 10 million. Then from there, we start to build strategy. So you don't build strategy over 10 years or for a 10 year period. You look at strategy in like a two to three year chunk. So that next goal is over the next three years, where do we need to be? And I think you use the exact same approach. You have an exact end date. And then you have the revenue number and a profit margin. And so let's say 10 years from now, we want to have a $100 million company. Three years from now, well, maybe we should be, if we're starting from scratch, we should probably be at 20 million, 25 million. We don't have to be a third of the way there. We don't have to be 33 million, but we're on our way. We're starting to grow. We're starting to build some infrastructure. And then we just build a profit goal along with that. So the goal is three years from now, we're going to be at $20 million and we want to have a 12% profit margin. And then you can, you can articulate a couple measurables along with that. Well, we have three clubs. Well, we have eight clubs. How many people will we employ? Just a few measurables that are associated with that three-year goal. And then when we have that three-year goal set, that's our strategy. Now we can understand what our one-year goal should be. So if we set the three-year goal correctly, it puts us on track for the 10-year. Now we're setting the one year to set the one-year goal correctly. It better put us on track when we achieve it for that three-year goal. That's what the process looks like. Now, when you're doing that one-year goal, man, your feet are held to the fire. You have to be accurate. We're not daydreaming anymore. We're thinking, what can we actually achieve over the next 52 weeks? So this better be realistic. I think this is actually a really good reminder that no matter what stage you are in your business and no matter what size of business you have, having these three goals is an absolutely essential part of our growth as a business owner, of what we can achieve with our business and having vision or being a visionary leader, as we started out talking talking earlier, um, they're all essential elements to, uh, to having that vision. And Chantel, furthermore, think about it from the perspective of your team members, all the people that you're hiring. I mean, you want to enlist them into this process, this journey of achieving this long-term vision. Well, if you don't know what that vision is, if you don't know what that long-term goal is, how are you going to inspire? How are you going to enlist someone to pour their heart and soul and their effort into this important work if we haven't defined where the heck we're going? So we find that that's a powerful recruitment tool. We can let people understand, hey, this is where we're going. If you're excited about it, if you want to take us there, if you want to be a part of this journey, then come join us. And so we all have to understand what does our world look like? What's the organization look like 10 years from now, three years from now, one year from now? Otherwise, it's it's just not – there's not enough meaning in just showing up for work and executing day in and day out if you don't know what you're a part of from a big picture standpoint. We'll be back with Luke in just a second where he's going to leave us with his advice for business owners to grow in the next 12 months. But first, here's a message from our podcast partner, ABC Financial. ABC Financial leads the health and fitness industry in software and payment processing solutions. If you want your business to thrive with the most advanced club management software, comprehensive payment processing, and customer service that is second to none, choose ABC Financial. Request a demo at www.abcfinancial.com. So three things. Number one, have incredible focus around a narrowly defined strategic niche. Understand what you want to be the best in the world at and be relentlessly focused just on that. I would argue that 95% of business failures, whether it means the business goes out of business or just starts to struggle as the economy starts to change and things become tumultuous in, in, in an unknown 
horizon that's in front of us, we struggle because we lose focus on that niche. That's number one. Number two is as the leader, focus on the constraint. What is the constraint that's holding you back from moving to the next level as an organization? What's the one constraint? We're all dealing with one constraint. So instead of saying, man, I have to improve every aspect of my club or my business all at once, focus on the constraint. And once you solve that constraint, then you can start to grow and scale faster. So instead of taking a shotgun approach and focusing on everything, identify the constraint first. And then the last piece I would say is, and this is not a cliche, I think we have to build all of our, build all of our strategy around this, is that we win with people. Man, the strength of the business is people. Our businesses are going to grow by having great people. And I think the who comes before the what. So having great strategy is so incredibly important. Having great execution is important. But people, the who comes before everything. So renew yourself with your obsession over having the right people on the bus in the right seats. That's the best way I know to grow. It's not better strategy, which I'm obsessed with. It's not better marketing, which I'm in love with. It's not better sales tactics. It's do you have the right people in the right seats? Are you obsessed with, with that, uh, that mindset? First who, then what? So those would be my, my three, Chantel. Luke, we are so grateful for you coming back on the show. You are inspiring. You are an amazing leader. And I just feel personally very, very blessed that you've taken the time to come back on and, and share your knowledge with us once again. So I just want to say thank you so, so much. And Tribe, if you ever have the opportunity to go along to any of our industry events and to hear Luke speak, then I cannot encourage it strongly enough. You must, must make the opportunity to go and hear Luke speak in person because you know, on the podcast is amazing in person is even better. So Luke, thank you so much once again for joining us on the show. It's my pleasure, Chantel. Thank you so much and and continued success and the very important work that you're doing. Thank you. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. Today, I am joined by Julia Arguelles, the Senior Account Manager from Corporate Fitness Works and the Vice President of MACMA. Welcome along to the show, Julia. Thank you, Chantal. Now, of course, MACMA is the Mid-Atlantic Club Management Association. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the association? Absolutely. MACMA is a professional network of athletic, health, fitness, racket, and sports clubs in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. It was founded in 1986 by a group of local club owners with the mission to address the needs of the industry at a regional level and to promote the interests of the industry throughout the region. Now, I believe you've got a couple of events coming up. Do you want to tell us all about those? We sure do. I'd like to talk about the MACMA Annual Conference and Golf Tournament. It's taking place on July 12 and 13 in Annapolis, Maryland. It's a perfect example of the MACMA mission in action. The conference is a great local event designed for club owners, studio directors, instructors, trainers, and anyone looking to grow or explore new ideas. This year's theme is Innovate, Integrate, Motivate, and attendees will be inspired with keynotes from John Kennedy as he talks through the need to shift our style of leadership to engage and motivate the team, utilizing his term, I really like this one, the cannoli factor along with Alan Stein Jr., who will share habits and actions of the best of the best to inspire attendees to take immediate action to improve their mentality, habits, and maximize their contributions to the team. Wow. So that's coming up really soon. So one more time with those dates. It was July 12 and 13. July 12 and 13. And so that's the conference. And there's also the golf day associated with it, which sounds like a lot of fun. It's going to be a great day. Hopefully, uh, lots of sun and people out on the course. The golf tournament itself is July 12th. The golf includes the round of golf, the cart, lunch, free beverage cart, as well as prizes at the end. So it should be a fun day. Well, I'm a little bit jealous that I'm so far away because otherwise I would be there for sure. (laughs) So who should be attending the event, Julia? 
anybody who's in the club, whether it's the studio directors, group exercise directors, instructors, trainers, anyone who's really seeking that next level of growth and opportunity, exploring new ideas, open to new ideas at the club level. You know what I love most about these events is the opportunity to network. You know, you go along to conferences and and in this this particular example, a, a golf day, which sounds like so much fun. And, you know, you always learn a lot when you attend these type of events, but networking is such an amazing bonus that you get in addition Absolutely. to doing that, isn't it? Absolutely. It's one of the, the benefits of interacting with local team leaders, local presenters, leaders in our industry. It gives you that opportunity to hear a different perspective as well as engage in conversation that may, you know, motivate you and your your club to a, a new program, an event, etc. Well, it sounds like a really valuable couple of days. So most importantly, Julia, how do people go about registering? It's so easy to register for the conference. Visit macmaclubs.org, click on register for the conference on the homepage. Oh, well, that is super simple. And needless to say, we will also put that link in today's show notes. So Julia, thank you so much for joining us today, telling us all about the Macro Conference and the Golf Day that's coming up in July 12 and 13. And Tribe, make sure you head over to the website at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, click on that link and head through and register for the day. Anything else you want to leave us with, Julia? Just want to say that, you know, allow yourself to get out of the club and explore, you know, new ideas, solidify relationships with our vendors and interact with other leaders in our industry. It's going to be an action packed day and we love to have you there. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Precore Quick Fire 5. Okay, crew. So I am particularly excited about today's interview because I am welcoming to the show, Sarah Rob O'Hagan. Welcome along, Sarah. Hi, how are you? I'm very, very well. Thank you. I'm thrilled to have you on the show and we're going to next week be diving in and talking about your new book, Extreme You, which I cannot wait to chat to you about. But today you're joining us for the pre-core quick fire five questions. Are you ready for your questions? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Okay. Tell everyone, why do you do what you do? Because I love seeing human beings get more out of their own potential. It totally blows my hair back. And what's the best piece of advice (laughs) that you've ever received? Without risk does not come great reward. That's a great one. And tell us what's a personal habit that helps you become better at what you do? Working out every morning. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I think we can all relate to that. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Now tell us, and you're allowed to be a little bit biased on this one, what's one book, (laughs) podcast, or blog that you would recommend and why? I'm going to go with a podcast, and I'm going to say um, the Startup Podcast, which is by Gimlet Media, and it's basically all about, you know, startup businesses. And it's just fascinating across many different industries. And you learn lots of really interesting stories. That sounds very cool. We'll grab the link for that one and pop it in today's show notes. And tell us what will our FBP family learn when we chat in next week's show? How to be the most awesome, extreme, amazing version of themselves. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us for the pre-call quick five five. You're welcome. That interview is coming up next week in show 109. Before I sign off today, I have a favor to ask. As you know, it makes me incredibly proud and happy to know that our show is reaching people all across the world. And hopefully you're loving the information that you hear each week. The favor that I have is this. Could you jump onto Facebook or onto our website at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and share one of our shows with a friend who you think will enjoy the information? It can be another fitness owner, it can be a colleague, a mentor, a staff member, anyone at all. I'd love you to help us share the show and help us to continue to support more fitness professionals in our industry. Thank you so much. Until next week's show, thank you for joining us for another week of the podcast. Remember what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. great show this week that you should be suffering DOMs, delayed onset mind soreness, as you are overloaded and that's when your mind is strengthened. You and your business have been strengthened thanks to the amazing support of our premier sponsor, Active Management. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au only if you want to strengthen your business and your leadership. 
Don't forget all today's links and notes are found at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com where you can also subscribe and never miss a show and maybe win a prize. Next week is another incredible guest with Chantal, so get ready for more Fit Bizpiration. <laughs>